Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. I was a little late because there was quite a bit, 33 songs I wanted to talk about, and also I was on a mini vacation. So we are back again, as always, all the songs are in a Spotify link down below, and uh, let's hop into it with the trash category, songs that I think are trash. Uh, just remember, this is just my opinion, all these ones. Uh, we got Alec Monopoly and Medusa with Money Can't Save Us. Uh, what even is this? Uh, the drop, it actually loses energy when it comes in and the vocal chops are lazy and the whole track just feels really incomplete. I think this is the first song from Alec Monopoly other than it being a weird gimmicky DJ. I don't get it. Uh, then we're moving into the bad category. Songs I thought are bad. Songs I thought not great. Again, just remember my opinion. Uh, but we've got Odd Prophet with the only difference between me and God is I take days off uh, from the Tempest Part 1 EP, which is out now. Uh, this is far from Odd Prophet's best. Uh, in fact, it's it's really not that great, I think. Um, there's a bunch of conflicting sounds and synths and then the just really random off-tempo midsection. The whole track just felt uh, really messy to me overall. We've got Spagheady and company with Hammer Time, the VIP. Uh, this is a bit of an unneeded VIP for this, in my opinion. Uh, was short and kind of boring rhythm uh, mix of a track uh, of an original that was fairly okay to begin with. Um, not really my style of a VIP. Did not enjoy it that much. Then we've got Galantis, David Guetta, and Five Seconds of Summer with Lighter. Uh, this song is the definition of flat. Uh, it's got the energy and commercial appeal going for it, but uh, especially with the big names there, it just didn't really do anything with that energy and uh, commercial appeal. So it's just a pretty flat song. Then we've got Cage with White Tiger. Uh, I'm quite torn on this ta track. Actually, it does kind of feel like there's two competing ideas or motifs going on throughout the whole time. There's a bit of a bass focused deep house sound. Um, and then these like atmospheric string, also weird midsection there. And then that roaring like tiger throughout. It's just, I don't know. I don't think they really worked harmoniously together. And I just thought uh, another one that was a little bit more messy in my eyes. Then moving into the meh category songs that I thought were uh, were meh. We've got Murata with Gleeful God. Uh, I mean, Murata is just Murata on this one to me, and it's the same old crashing rhythm with stuttering synths. Um, th this one does have some better mixing, some other ones from Murata that I haven't enjoyed in the past, but it's kind of the same song over and over again for me personally. We got Valentino Khan and Pauline Her with Surrender from the new Powerline EP by Valentino Khan. Uh, a bit of a darker toned uh, tech house track here with a driving and repetitive beat. Uh, the track in particular doesn't have a ton of variety to it and doesn't really want to make me revisit it a ton, but it didn't sound that bad. We got Fairlane and Point North with Not My Night, another kind of pop rock uh, melodic bass track with vocals right out of the early 2000s. Um, honestly, I'm getting really sick of this specific soundscape for now. Uh, it sounds relatively like the same song over and over and over again, d depending on what artist does it. They always have their own tiny little flair to it, but not enough to really make it that interesting. Um, Fairlane does a great job of, I, I think, the mix uh, and creating something more interesting in that third act, but um, I don't know. I didn't really love the key change a ton and I didn't, yeah, didn't really have enough for me to fall in love with it or think it's anything different than what I've heard before. We've got Sultan and Shepard and Lanx with Highest Love. Uh, the Endless Dawn LP is out now by Sultan and Shepard. And uh, this is a very typical melodic slash progressive house track. Um, nothing here to write home about, just a kind of your average good, I mean, meh, whatever <laughs> house song. If you like that kind of stuff, you might like this. But uh, then we got Faint with Far Call. I wasn't vibing on this new Faint track as much. It's a bit of a hard style kind of D&B mashup with a high tempo. Uh, but the, that high tempo doesn't really lend itself too much to the energy department. It kind of doesn't really keep up that energy despite the kind of ness to the track. And uh, yeah, a bit of a stylistically odd one for me. Then we got Ray Volpe with CU Drop, uh, relatively by the like kind of paint by numbers dubstep track from Ray Volpe, but something about the mixing just feels a little off throughout the whole track. It sounds pretty flat and linear and doesn't really let those kind of heavy synths and baseline runs to like, it doesn't really let it stand out with a kind of pretty flat mixing, I think personally. So um, not too bad in its style and what it was going for, but I just didn't love the mixing in the end. We got Sullivan King with Blame, a relatively simple track for Sullivan King, all things considered. Not really, but for Sullivan King standards. Uh, more rock focus, I think, than it is really EDM and at times. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a kind of upper middle of the pack song from his discography. So uh, nothing too crazy. It sounds like a Sullivan King track. We got Nightmare and Jewels featuring Shaw Simone with uh, Thrilla. 
another weird odd one for me for this one from these two. There's elements that I really resonated with me and I really enjoyed and others that fell super hard. And I think it just ended up, I don't know. This is really, I think just a guilty pleasure. This is one where I kind of listen. I'm like, it sounds off. Something feels weird to me, but I kind of like it. So it's just in meh. We've got Rez and Blank with Everywhere, Nowhere. Uh, sound design-wise, I think this is the best single from the upcoming record of Rez. Uh, but structurally, I just found it really didn't go anywhere. And I'm finding that a lot with these singles coming out now, that these new Rez tracks just, they're good good ideas, but they're just not doing much with it, personally. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see or hear that whole LP when it comes out. We've got Petite Biscuit with a bad episode, a simple electropop track with a commercial edge to it. Um, didn't mind it individually in a vacuum, but I feel like it fits a lot better into a bigger context of a record uh, where there's stuff to support it with more interesting ideas here and there. So. We've got S.G. Lewis and Chloe Cayette with Costa, or Costa, I guess. Uh, some early 2000s sounding French house here, which is typically a good thing and something I enjoy quite a bit. Reminds me a lot of Daft Punk's Discovery. Uh, but this one just was a bit dry, I think. I enjoyed it for its simplicity, but didn't really pack a whole ton into that simplicity, um, which is sort of against the point of simplicity. But um, yeah, in the end, I just thought it was a mad track. And then we've got uh, Gasol. Oh man, I, I've never actually been able to say this word that well. Uh, Gasofelstein, I want to say Gasofelstein, Gasofelstein, and uh, Jan Wagner with uh, Hard Dreams. Uh, this is also a bit of a throwback track. This feels like a retro, like electronica one that reminds me a lot of the early days of craft work, actually. Um, it's a neat track, but one that I do, just never really like the style of. I'm um, similar to craft work. I, I enjoy their stuff to some extent, but it's just not a, a style that I enjoyed so much. Uh, it's a weird one for me, but I still still a solid track. Uh, but then we're heading into the good category, songs that I thought were uh, were pretty good. We've got Temanite with Reckless, um, lots of pace and non-stop energy with this one, uh, but it didn't really quite have that classic Temanite charm to it, I thought. Um, but yeah, it's a solid, good song that just uh, was that. Then we got Logic, the uh, or Fear by Logic, the Slushy remix. Um, I mean, Slushy didn't really do a whole ton to this track, but that's sort of why I enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, Logic has some good bars. I kind of liked the song originally. I thought it was upper middle okay. And uh, I thought Slushy's production actually helped shine more than the regular hip hop beat that was originally on the back end of it. So I would rather listen to this than the original, uh, personally. So. We got Eptic with Cyber Hell. Uh, Epic Eptic is here with his kind of bread and butter metallic synths and dense bass lines, kind of what you come to know and love from Eptic at this point. Um, this could have easily been uh, kind of a cut track or one older one from the End of the World LP that he had uh, just in 2022, I think. But um, yeah, one that I enjoyed. Then we got Martin Garrix and Seth Hills with Biochemical, probably my favorite of the new Martin Garrix tracks as of late. Uh, There's kind of a bit of a hybrid bass and electro house cut um, that feels like primetime Garrix to me. I think it's the kind of best mixed track of the, I think, three or four as well up to this point. I think it's just three and uh, one that I enjoyed. I think it's my favorite of the uh, upcoming whatever this album EP, whatever it's going to be so far. We got Masayoshi Iomori with The Redeemer. Uh, this reminds me a lot of early 2013s or 2010s Complexdro. Uh, it's heavy and loud and screeches and it's got high energy. Um, and that's kind of the point of this track. I enjoyed it for just how much it just went. So, enjoyed it. We got Caster with Paul's Dream and or Dune as this one's called. Uh, first of all, go watch Dune Part 2. Seriously, go watch it. If you haven't seen Part 1, watch Part 1 and then go watch Part 2. You will enjoy it. Um, but second of all, I think this song is perfect for what if uh, if the Dune soundtrack was EDM. This would sound like it perfectly. It's a much longer, expansive track with room for atmospheric storytelling. And uh, Caster used a bunch of sonic or at least uh, tonal elements from the actual soundtrack to make this uh, feel like it's a part of the universe, the Dune universe. So um, it's a nice, neat little touch, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. We've got Effin with In the Sky. Uh, Effin's keeping his track a little bit lighter than he usually does. Um, you've got all your like kind of iconic rough Effin synths there, but it's all wrapped in this kind of dreamy sound design. Um, a lot more commercially viable for an Effin track, um, at least comparatively to his other stuff. It's not really a commercial track, but um, this is one that you could easily introduce a friend to for Effin. Be like, hey, this was what Effin sounds like, and then you get into the grittier stuff. But uh, yeah, still solid. Really liked it. We've got Camouflage with On My Mind, a bright and airy house cut uh, with Camouflage's kind of signature sound design all throughout. Um, I love the vocal chops, and overall, I just thought the track uh, should be a little longer. I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to hear more of it, so that's my only real gripe with it. 
We got more Kismet and Wink with energy, uh, vibrant and colorful as always, that you always get with more Kismet. Um, but I thought Wink brought some real stability to this track in a way that kind of enhanced my experience with the track. Um, a bit easier to follow than other more Kismet stuff uh, tends to be because they're a little bouncy all over the place, which I, I actually do quite enjoy. Uh, but I think Wink uh, brought some, yeah, some real stability to this track that I thoroughly thought was great. We've got Casbo and Shallow featuring Bjorn with uh, Atlantis, um, the new Atlantis, and uh, the other song is Escape Me at this point, Double Sided Single just came out, and um, this track solidified that the new Casbo album is pretty much going to be an atmospheric progressive house one, um, and I'm here for it. Uh, this is more of a sentimental down-to-earth track that builds off of the tone more so than any kind of fancy synth runs that Casbo had done in the past, so uh, nice one, a li little bit more uh, chilled out than anything else he's done, that's for sure. They got the Caracol Project and Imano with You Left Me Hanging. The new Self Reflections EP is out now by the Caracol Project. And um, yeah, a, a shorter track, this one specifically, but uh, one that's really well done. Uh, Caracol and Imano team up for a very like vocal forward song um, with a steadfast beat. I thought the vocals were a big highlight on this one as well, too. So this is, uh, I'm really excited to get into that EP, which I have not really yet. We got Mr. Bill and Infected Mushroom with Raw Authentic. Uh, after a slew of side trance collabs between these two, uh, this got some brand new ideas here with a, a bass centric or bass house centric track here, and I think it's quite marvelous. Um, the sound design is impeccable as always that you get with Mr. Bill and Infected Mushroom, and I love the weightiness of the the bass lines here. Uh, the first drop I would say was definitely much stronger, and I wish the uh, it wouldn't have gone for a more side trance esque route on the second and back one, but uh, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Then we got Direct with Ghost, a classic chilled out garage track from Direct, uh, but with a layer of really commanding vocals that sound like they're straight out of like a Rufus de Soul track. Um, I, I don't know if what it is. I tried to find the vocalist and it seemed uncredited as if it was just Direct, but um, I really love the vocals here. The mixing is super dynamic, making room for a very, very full mix, uh, more so than I think I've heard of Direct in a long time, where uh, the track just felt really, really full, uh, and I loved it. We got Feed Me with Calorific, I think I said that right, uh, a truly funky electro house track. It's part jumpy, part high energy, uh, and all in all is a, probably one of the best mixed tracks of the week. Um, both this one and the direct one, I just really, really enjoyed for its, uh, its mixing in particular. So uh, that was a solid one. Go check that one out. And our penultimate track of the week is Fred again, Lil Yachty, and Overmono with Stay In It. Uh, it feels like there uh, isn't a whole ton of happening in the off-drop sections. It's mainly just Lil Yachty just kind of doing whatever he's doing. Uh, but when you get to those uh, the drops, the beat kicks in. It comes in strong and with force. And man, uh, it, this is just a, a banger of a track. Um, Yachty's vocals are actually pretty great in those sections, especially in the kind of drop with the chops. But um, yeah, overall, just a really jumpy, high-energy club banger. And my number one track of the week that I loved the most uh, was Jaren with Butterfly. Um, this song is uh, surreal to me, I would say is the best way to put it, because um, I love what Jaren puts out, and this song is no exception. It's a sound design masterpiece. I love the kind of future bass, color bassy, just like uh, wonky, just out there sound design that Jaren often puts out. But um, he samples this really obscure Christian song uh, from my childhood that I that I like loved. It was like the first like non like worshipy Christian song that I, I really fell in love with. Um, it's the uh, You Make Me New part of the song is from this like old Gungers Beautiful Things track that I used to like listen to over and over and over again. So uh, this one like threw me back nostalgia. Like I literally heard it and I was like, whoa, I thought I was like playing two songs at once. I didn't know what was happening. So, um, but yeah, uh, Take that aside, if you're not of faith or not a Christian or whatever, it's still a great track. Uh, it's still, still very lots of fun and uh, one that you should definitely go listen to regardless. So, And you wouldn't know if you wouldn't know from the sample anyways. It's just a regular sample. So, um, But yeah, that's been This Week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all tracks in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Rotate Media. I'll see you guys in another video.